Joe is scaling back his exposure in that sector overall. So, Joe, you sold United Health, you sold AbbVie, and you sold Eli Lilly. Those have been some pretty hot names as of late. Well, let's let's talk. First of all, uh, United Health and AbbVie are two names that I have owned for quite some time personally. I owned United Health since January of 2022 um, at 492. Out of it at 504, call it and a half. AbbVie, we owned at uh, I owned it personally at November since November of 2022 at 145. But listen, the momentum has clearly uh, diminished significantly in the healthcare space. Whether it's Moderna. Humana, which I know is rallying today, but overall, J&J, Thermo Fisher, these are names where momentum is lost. Upon inception of the strategy, 22% of the ETF was in healthcare. At the end of April, 18% was in healthcare. Today, that's down to 7.8. The S&P is somewhere around 13. And Dom, it's not just because of momentum. I think Eli Lilly, and, and if we have a chart that we could show, Eli Lilly was introduced to the portfolio in April of 2022. And you could see where it was at the time, uh, somewhere around 300. The reason for Eli Lilly, which maintains very strong momentum, is because we overlay the quality factor and we say, okay, what's going on with the balance sheet? What's going on with the direction of revenue growth? And the revenue growth is beginning to contract. The revenue growth uh, over the last three years, 8% revenue growth. Over the last year, negative 8%. Last quarter, negative 10%. So while you have a stock that looks great from a momentum perspective, overlay the quality factor, realize the revenue growth is contracting significant comparative to the three years. Can I just ask about Lilly really quick, Steve, and I'll bring you in for, for yeah. this one here. Don't bring me on Lilly. No, no, no. But just in general, the, the concept Perfect. here, when we're talking about revenue growth over a certain time period. Correct. Those are backward looking factors. There are some folks who would say that the opportunity for growth in things like yeah. those diabetic treatments that have weight loss side effects, which Lilly is now part of that conversation for, lend you to believe that future expected or forward looking forecasted growth could be more indicative. And that's the reason why a company like Lilly would have run the way that it has over the course of the last six months. Is that the right way to look at it? I mean, Steve, I, I don't know. Not on a one drug Lilly basis, right, right. not on a one drug basis. But if you only looked at revenue growth, you'd never own an earlier stage biotech stock because they have no growth. It's all in the come. So for Lilly, um, all the co drug companies need to replenish their pipelines. Look at Pfizer. It's been it's just been flat forever. It's been down forever. Right. And they benefit from the vaccine. But you've got to take a look at the pipeline. And by the way, the obesity drug market is getting very crowded very quickly. So ultimately, generics take over, but you got to price competitively at some point. So I think that's the issue with Lilly. So yes, you've got to look at forecasted earnings, but they're very uncertain in, in life sciences because you've got to know if number one, the drugs get approved, you've got to know if they're going to be if there's going to be uptake. You got to know if there's going to be reimbursement by the private payers and by the public payers. Right. So you've got all those issues. So it's not as easy as looking at what the upside could be in projected earnings.